Hi, and welcome to Ask the Mayor, our seasonally scheduled program when we sit down with the mayor and ask him questions related to the town of Wallingford. I'm Kyle Swartz, the communications specialist here at Town Hall, and joining me today is our mayor, Mayor Vinny Cervoni. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing, Kyle? I'm doing very well, and yourself? I'm all right. Good. Let's jump off and talk about October was manufacturing month. Uh, what are some of the ways that businesses in our town take part? And of course, you have your Wallingford Worldwide tag that you like to use. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, we have great businesses in this town that uh, produce products that go into the commerce stream throughout the world. Um, we, we have Ulbrick Steel, or stainless steel, special metals, and um, they produce products that go into surgical devices. They produce uh, the membrane that's under the buttons of your key fob hmm. in many manufacturers. I was always homes. wondering who manufactured that. Yeah. They also make uh, parts that go into the guitar strings that I use. There you go. I'll switch brands because I found out Ulbrich uh, supports <laughs> the Adario strings. Um, we have Allnex, um, I think used to be American Cyanamid, but they make coatings in cans. Uh, if you put uh, most food or beverage products into a metal can without a coating, it will corrode the can. Hmm. So they make um, the coatings that goes in a, into a significant number of food product containers that go throughout the world. Uh, Bic Chemical is up the street from them. Um, they make polymers and processes that, uh, you know, make coatings like paints stick and be shiny or not shiny. Um, Amphenol, their world headquarters in Wallingford, uh, they make microwave cables that go in communication towers throughout the world they also make microwave cables that go in the F-series fighter planes. Mm. So neither Top Gun movie could have been made without Amphenol, based in Wall. <laughs> Tom Cruise approves. I hope so. Uh, Holochrome, a division of Fastenal, they make fasteners, nuts, bolts, and the like. Their fasteners go into many products, but the ones we mostly know um, are Cummings diesel engines that go throughout the world, and Harley-Davidson motorcycles mm. that go throughout the world. Mm. So we, uh, we're happy to support these business partners in town um, who are great providers of employment um, and, you know, one element that puts Wallingford on the world map. Wallingford truly is worldwide, and I think that's something people um, may understand more as we uh, delve more into that. Yep. Um, <clears throat> It wouldn't be a Wallingford uh, Ask the Mayor episode if I didn't ask you for an update on the pool. So the, the pool, uh, at a recent council meeting, uh, the specs were referred back to the designing architect for code review. Uh, that design was completed in 2020, and in 2022, uh, the state building code was revised, and the plans have to be reviewed to see if there are any modifications that are required because of the building code that was modified two years after it was drawn. Once it comes back to us, uh, then the project will go out to bid, and then we'll come back to the council uh, to determine if we want to go forward and bond and build. If, if the council it doesn't have the appetite for a pool, then we are going to immediately look into uh, what purpose we can give back to that park. Absolutely, and that was the next question I was just about to ask, because obviously people have seen the price tag for the pool. It's very expensive. Maybe the appetite won't be there on the town council for it. Some of the other uh, options I have personally heard is including a splash pad. I know a lot of people in town have talked about that. A skate park, some kind of playground over there, anything at all where people can, you know, families can gather in Wallingford. I know my, myself, my wife and I, we have a two-year-old. We bring her to splash pads in other towns. It would be nice to have a splash pad in Wallingford. I don't know if you had any thoughts on some of the alternative uses. Sure. So the, the pool proposal is not just a pool. It's a whole mm -hmm. park. And that proposal does include a splash pad. So that's uh, certainly within consideration. Uh, and it, in it included some further amenities to the park as you head away from the road, so that would be to the east. Uh, so that would all still be on the table for exploration. So yeah, there's, there's gotta be some purpose given back to that park. It cannot consider, continue to sit in its current state. Absolutely, happy to hear it. Yeah. How are some of the technological updates going here at Town Hall and throughout the town? So 
If you look in the classified ads in the newspaper, you would have seen a bid uh, for desktop computers, and that's because we're getting to the point where we've done enough of the infrastructure improvements, uh, making sure that there's connectivity throughout the building, and also, very importantly, making sure that there are firewalls and virus protection. Uh, so we are at the completion of those, those background processes, and the next step is to start uh, getting the the desktop computers and other similar devices circulated throughout town offices. It's a lot of improvements needed here in Town Hall, and it's not easy to make those kinds of improvements, those enormous kinds of improvements uh, all at once. Obviously, it's a process. Yes. I think you mentioned the firewall. That's such an important thing people need to understand that we really needed to improve that here at Town Hall to come up. I mean, even just the 21st century standards. Big concern for the prior administration was the security uh, that goes along with the security current concerns that go along with opening up uh, digital access to town hall. So we are going to be very deliberate and careful about that. I think that's the way to do it. Absolutely. Uh, what's the latest update with the police headquarters? Do they continue to finish off the new building there and think about heading over there sooner than later? Sooner than later. I was happy to get a tour a couple weeks ago to see in its near final state. Mm. The projected date is early mid-December for uh, the police and dispatch to move over there. Uh, it's very important that the minute you dial 911, we know where that call goes. And right now, it goes to our North Main Street facility, um, and there's going to be an immediate switch for the move where the dispatch is handled at 100 Barnes Road. Um, it is an incredibly uh, well-designed, state-of-the-art, public safety command center that sh should serve the town's public safety needs uh, for at least 50 years. That's wonderful to hear. And I just know because some people are going to have a question about the uh, building that the police are vacating. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the potential future uses for that? Yes. So the communications tower that is currently attached to the building on North Main Street is vital to the town-wide communication. So the tower needs to stay there. Um, I mean, either that or it needs to move to Town Hall, and that could be a multi-million dollar experience. Um, because of that, uh, we, it seems likely to me that we will keep the building in the town inventory uh, and look for some town or community use for the building. That's my current thought. Uh, it's going to come before the council in the coming weeks. For sure. Speaking of the police, they recently held one of their getting coffee with a cop um, events. I think that was about a month ago, and it was very well received and did very, very well on social media. I monitor the town social media, of course. Can Tim a little bit about why those events are important and why they always get such a good reaction from the community? So our public safety officers, whether they are police or fire, um, so often your first introduction to them is in the heat of a difficult moment. And if instead we can create opportunities for people to have friendly interactions with officers while they're healthy and safe um, and, and make those relationships more common, our, it, it makes just for a friendlier town. Our police officers uh, and firefighters are great people and um, they enjoy their work and they enjoy working with the public. So giving them the opportunity to have you know, friendly one-on-one -on -one conversations you know, in, in a non-emergent atmosphere is just better for all of our relationships. I completely agree. And that's also why I really like the National Night Out event that the police held this year for the first time in town. I thought that was a wonderful event. And like you said, a great way for people to get to know our local emergency responders in a uh, manner that doesn't involve an emergency. Absolutely. Kids were at that event. Uh, we ended up having it at uh, South Main Street here in front of Town Hall. And... Uh, it was just great fun. Absolutely. My daughter still has a plastic fire helmet from uh, that event. Excellent. She wears it all the time. Um, speaking of the fire department, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that obviously some changeover has gone on over at the fire department. We have a new chief over there, and of course there is some investigation being opened up into the former leadership at the fire department. I don't know if you want to give any updates on that. So uh, Chief Buck has been uh, working for the town uh, as fire chief since August 29th this year. Uh, he was very quickly brought into an investigation of some allegations that, that were made about uh, improprieties during some training. Um, we are nearing the close of that investigation uh, and uh, we'll 
look forward to wrapping that up and uh, alleviating any public concerns going forward. It's very important that the public understands what happened there. Yes. The annual holiday stroll and tree lighting are coming up as we come towards the holiday season. Speaking of great events that take place downtown, what can residents expect with those two community events? So on December 7th, I believe it's noon to 5.30, uh, we'll be on South Main Street in front of Town Hall. There will be hot cocoa and treats for kids. Um, I know last year they had draft horses pulling uh, a carriage. Um, it's a tremendous community event where uh, children have a great time. It culminates with, you know, after sunset, um, the parade of everybody in attendance heading down to the gazebo um, where there will be uh, the lighting of the tree and the ending of the festivities there. It's always a great time. Um, it, it was impressive to see how well populated it was last year. Do you think Santa Claus might make an appearance? Uh, I am reasonably confident that we have gotten on Santa Claus's calendar for that day. <laughs> we reached out to him. We think he'll be there. Yes. <laughs> uh, speaking of well-attended events, of course, the presidential election recently took place and early voting took place right in this room here in Town Hall. And as you know, working in Town Hall, we saw every single day how much the turnout was for early voting. It was tremendous. Lines out the door every single day. Uh, your thoughts on how well early voting ran this year and especially the people who are here running early voting on behalf of the town. So the registrars, of course, added uh, temporary staff uh, to help them run the early voting event. Um, we did have uh, extended early voting for the primary that happened in August. That's true. Um, I, I, don't, I think 315 people voted in that primary. Mm -hmm. uh, fast forward to a couple of weeks ago, when early voting started, we regularly had between 500 and 800 people a day coming through town hall, wow. coming through this room. Um, to cast their ballots early. I think the end result was on election night, uh, the registrars were counting 7,000 ballots wow. that were cast early. Um, all things considered for our first time uh, being part of the early voting process, I think it went pretty well. There were a handful of complaints that we worked to address. And I think by next year, you know, now that we know we're going to have to do it again, um, that We'll, we'll have a better handle on it. Yeah, I think it was a tremendous success, uh, especially for the first year. And I think that's great that people understand that you can come in, you can vote early, your vote is safe. You don't, it's, it's difficult voting on election day sometimes. It's one day, you never know what your schedule is going to be. I've always said that I thought election day should be a national holiday to make sure everybody can vote. But now if early voting is to be run this well. There you go. I think that's really a way to alleviate some of the problems people have with voting. So I was very happy to see it. And again, I think the people who ran it did a tremendous job here. Very happy to see it. And of course, there was you know, leading into this election, there was all this talk of, oh, is there going to be election security? Are people going to be safe? Is there going to be turmoil? And we saw none of that here at Town Hall. That is absolutely true. We had been prepared. Uh, the Secretary of the State sponsored um, emergency response training for Election Day. We all participated in it. And um, so we did feel prepared. And fortunately, there were no incidents to report. Uh, everybody was safe in Wallingford on Election Day. And, uh, you know, of course, we're going to support the election experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic to hear. Uh, you performed recently with the Wallingford Symphony Orchestra. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, that was, uh, to say the least, it was great fun for me. Um, I had been invited to perform by the Symphony Board and uh, its director, Phil Ventry. And uh, they gave me the opportunity to premiere my new Eric Clapton tribute project. It's called Peaches and Diesel. <laughs> uh, we performed two songs that were on Eric Clapton's From the Cradle album. Um, Five Long Years was one, and the other one was Hoochie Coochie Man. And we did that as a trio, those two. And then the symphony joined us for Wonderful Tonight and for Layla. Um, there's video out there um, for my musical stuff. I have my own YouTube channel. And uh, I just, I had a tremendous experience. Um, I walked off the stage with uh, so much adrenaline that it took me a good 30 or 40 minutes to come down. Oh, I probably believe it. It, it was a, a tremendous experience. Um, thankfully, it was well received and I enjoyed performing with the professionals in the symphony. Mm -hmm. 
and they were very kind to me. That's good to hear. What, what is your YouTube channel for people out there if they want to see your performances? It's Vinny Cervoni, V-I-N-N-Y, C-E-R-V-O-N-I. We'll have to post that in the comments for this, absolutely. I think you were talking about doing, performing the intro and outro music for this as well. I don't know if we've gotten around to that yet. I think the last, uh, the last time we aired, um, I think some of my own music uh, was, was part of the, the final cut. I think you may be right. I think you may be right. Um, you and I are thinking of starting a podcast for the town, and I think, um, well, first of all, we're thinking of starting a podcast uh, with the goal of transparency and just bringing more people in and recognizing all the great people in town. Can, t can you tell me a little bit about, more about that? Sure. Uh, it will be a slightly easier thing for us to record and, uh, and put out there, and uh, it'll be an opportunity for us to have conversations, possibly guests, and um, talk about issues that... Uh, the residents of the town should be concerned about or be aware of. We definitely want to have guests. I think we want to bring in people just also to highlight all of the great people that are going on and doing great things in town. It's absolutely true. There are a lot of people in this town that contribute to its greatness, um, and we sh certainly uh, should make people aware of who it is uh, that are putting their hands and their brains into the good things we do for the community. I have a goal of getting the former Mayor Dickinson on the podcast. What do you think the chances of that are? I think that would be fun, um, and I, I, I think we could probably rope him in. I hope so. I'll certainly reach out to him. Um, Halloween recently took place. Yep. Halloween is great fun in this town. Um, we have the, the Goblin Parade uh, the Friday before Halloween. That was incredibly well attended. It was another event for which we shut down South Main Street. And um, there were times when uh, walking through South Main Street, um, it was shoulder to shoulder people. Uh, you know, there were, I think, apple cider donuts. There was uh, hot apple cider. Uh, there was cotton candy and popcorn. Uh, there was a DJ um, on the town's showmobile. And it, it was a, a great party and had, we had a great time. And then of course, Halloween night on North Main Street was another, um, just a, a tremendous experience. You know, I think we probably gave away 2,000 pieces of candy. Well, I was gonna say, you yourself took, place, uh, took part in that. Yeah, we are, uh, my wife and I live up near Dublin Park. And so we did participate in the nightmare on North Main Street. <laughs> and so the decorations that some of our neighbors um, you know, the way they, they have their houses decorated is just tremendous. And, uh, you know, people don't just come from Wallingford. It, 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 it's a great time. It's, it's another great party in Wallingford. This year I heard that people, some of the bloggers in the state were actually telling people to come to our town specifically for that event. So another example of how Wallingford transcends its borders. And you're right, I think there were people from all over the state who came in just to see that. Yeah, specifically WTNH mm -hmm. and Channel 8. Um, mentioned us, so it must have contributed to the tremendous attendance we had. Did your dogs dress up for Halloween? No, I saved them from that, <laughs> that hum, hum, uh, humility. They, uh, <laughs> they put up with a lot, so no, no costumes for them this year. Your house did dress up, though. Yes, monster house. My, my wife designed that, and uh, it came out beautifully. Did your house consume any uh, trick-or-treaters? Was that a fear at all? Uh, didn't seem to be, and you know, I walk, I regularly walk in between the teeth, and <laughs> here I am. You so, made it out alive. Yeah. We're all very thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's about all the time we have for this Ask the Mayor. I want to again thank Mayor Cervoni for coming out and joining us for this, and I want to thank all of you out there who tuned in. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. We'll be doing another one of these sometime later in the winter, and until then, enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday, and stay well, Wallingford.